because it's stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. In order to break away from the monotony that is a physics senior thesis, I thought I'd take some time to answer a question that I've gotten a lot in the comments actually, which is wondering how I got to physics in the first place. Why I didn't choose something else? And what a lot of people don't know is that I started out as a biology major first, and then found my way to physics. So in this video, I'd like to dissect exactly why I did that and why I'm not a biology major anymore. Now, even though I've talked about ODU about four billion times in all of my videos, I didn't actually start there. I started out at Virginia Commonwealth University, or VCU, and uh, VCU is basically known for two things. It's known for having a medical program and having a dope art program. There's also, they have like a business and maybe an engineering thing sprinkled in there, but those are the two things mainly. Now because I was there for the medical program, it made sense to study biology, right? Uh, there's a few requirements that you should fulfill before applying to medical school, certain biology courses and chemistry courses, and the test that you have to take in order to actually qualify for med school essentially is called the MCAT. And the MCAT has, well really it has every science ever on it, but the ones that are highly emphasized are ones that you'd be able to check off the list if you have a biology degree. Now initially bio was pretty fun for me. I had a fantastic professor at VCU. If you guys ever go there, you should take Dr. Battistelli's biology course. He's just, he's awesome. He really cares. Anyways, uh, I, I took my biology classes the first, uh, the first two years, uh, and I actually became an undergrad sort of equivalent of a TA for Bio 101 my freshman year. So that was pretty cool. So Bio wasn't something that I inherently sucked at. Um, I'm not going to say that I was good at biology, and I didn't get far enough into it to really be able to say that I was good at it, but it's also really common for biology majors to minor in chemistry. You get a lot of mutual checks off the list when uh, preparing for the whole MCAT thing. And chemistry was really fun. I really, I, I would say I enjoyed chemistry more than I did biology. And in a sense, I went further in chemistry. I took organic, I only took one semester of it, got an A. Uh, slept through my final too. Slept through my final of organic chemistry and still got an A. That's saying something. But basically all of the experiences I actually had at that university for biology were awesome. The thing that really shifted my perspective into realizing that even though it was fun, it wasn't a career path for me, was when I would come home, because Richmond's about two hours away from where I live now, when I would come home and I would have conversations with my parents, uh, that's not what I would want to talk about. I wouldn't want to talk about what I learned in biology. I wouldn't be like, you know the cool thing about the difference between NADPH and NADP plus? Or let me tell you about the citric acid cycle. It's just, those words never came out of my mouth because it wasn't particularly interesting to me. If any of you are familiar with Richard Feynman, you might know that he has an interview called Fun to Imagine, where he essentially spends the whole interview explaining a bunch of different physical phenomena. And what I would do when I came home on break or when I was just coming to visit is I would try to pick one of the things that he explained and explain it in basically the exact same way. Or I would try to anyways. And I, my parents, not being familiar with who Richard Feynman was, I would sort of pretend like that's how I would have explained it anyways. My favorite one is the time when Richard Feynman explains what fire is without you knowing that he's explaining what fire is. Here, I'm going to play that clip because it's amazing. Now, oxygen, for instance, in the air would like to be next to carbon, and if they get near each other, they snap together. If they're not too close, though, they repel and they go apart, so they don't know that they could snap together. It's just as if you had a ball that was trying to climb a hill and there was a hole it could go into, like a volcano hole, a deep one. It's rolling along. It doesn't go down in a deep hole because if it starts to climb the hill and then rolls away again. But if you made it go fast enough, it'll fall into the hole. And so if you have something like wood in oxygen, there's carbon in the wood from a tree, and the oxygen comes and hits it, carbon, but not hard enough. It just goes away again. And, you know, the air is always coming, nothing's happening. If you can get it faster by heating it up somehow, somewhere, somehow, get it started, a few of them come fast, they go over the top, so to speak, they come close enough to the carbon and snap in. And that gives a lot of jiggly motion which might hit some other atoms, making those go faster so they can climb up and bump against other carbon atoms, and they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe, which is one after the other. All these things are going faster and faster and snapping in, and the whole thing is changing. That catastrophe is a fire. 
I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can watch that full video if you want to after this. But anyways, it was my dad that pointed out that when I would try to explain these things, you could tell that none of this was actually tied to what I was studying in school. This was just, he, he pointed out that when I came home I never wanted to talk about biology or what I learned about the human body or something like that. It was always something that I saw on Cosmos or Into the Universe with Stephen Hawking or like a Richard Feynman documentary. Those videos don't go in depth. A lot of the things that they talk about are super hand wavy, but it gets you interested. Or at least it got me super interested. And there became a point where I realized that their explanations weren't enough for me anymore. And what those shows do is they provide this science, this information in a way that really anyone can understand. And the only compromise with that is you start to compromise what things are for what things are like, which is really all you, all you need if you want to know sort of what things are going on in the universe. But at this point, I wanted to know what things exactly were. So when Neil deGrasse Tyson would talk about galaxies flying away from each other, I wanted to know what exactly he meant when he said redshift or something like that. And at this time, I was two years into my biology degree, and my dad suggested maybe physics would be better. So I packed up my bags, left Richmond, and moved back to Virginia Beach. And then that brings us to my first semester at ODU as a physics major. So it's, it's crazy how influential those pop science shows can really be. It's like, because a few people were really good at talking about physics on TV, that changed my mind and changed my entire career path. And in a sense, that's why I started making these videos too, because anyone can watch a Neil deGrasse Tyson video and sort of pick up and understand what he's saying. And that's because he tries to present it in a way that it appeals to the masses. That's awesome and that's needed. And then any physics major is able to go through the professor's lecture notes or their textbook and study until they understand the exact physical concept that they're struggling with. Um, so what I'm trying to do is sort of meet in the middle. I take kind of a leap of faith that I would like physics and what I want to do with this channel is provide a means of showing people what it's like. That way they don't have to take that scary step by themselves. And overall just serve as a reference. That way you don't have to go at it blind. So really this whole video could have been summed up with biology wasn't my passion. I found my passion through watching pop science. <laughs> so, thanks, so thanks for letting me waste your time. But I just had to fit basically a four or five year story into this little video. So I'm sure there's some stuff that I skipped over. If you have any questions about the subtleties of what made me change my mind, let me know in the comment section and I'll see you guys there.